All right, I am back with another video, and today we're doing another modded build. Uh, the specific modded subclass that I have been highly requested to work with, uh, both on the channel and in my Discord, is Rune Knight. So we're going to be building that today. And it's a fairly simple build. Essentially, what I'm going for here is a very simple playstyle, and we're actually using Karlak today, as I may or may not have been inspired by a certain... Uh, article posted online. Regardless, this build is rather interesting at the same time as being simple. It, it's quite comical. This is kind of a joke build as much as it is a legitimate build, and despite it being kind of a joke, it is actually one of the most powerful builds I've ever made in terms of pure damage. Uh, the build can tank a hit too. I mean, we are going to be using some levels that have a lot of uh, hit to die, as it were, but um. Yeah, it is, this is a funny build, it's kind of a joke build, but it's also very powerful and it fits Karmak perfectly, so let's get into it. Uh, you can kind of take the levels of this build in any order you like, it really doesn't matter as long as you kind of end up with the final build that we have here, as the progression for both uh, kind of sides of this is going to be pretty strong in the early and the late game, but the build truly comes online at around the final level, that's when it gets to its most powerful, but you are still going to have a lot of power from now until then. Uh, so basically you can choose to start off as fighter or barbarian, because spoilers, we're going to be using barbarian here, and you've probably already guessed why, but let's start off with fighter for now. Fighter is going to give us a fighting style, and I am using the expanded... Um, fighting styles mod to give us the rest of the uh, kind of fighting styles that weren't present in the game from 5e. In this case, I've gone with thrown weapon fighting, allowing us to deal an additional two damage with thrown weapons, because yes, this is a throwing build, with a twist, but again, you'll see what I mean. As for our ability scores, we're going to go with a pretty standard throwing build martial kit. A 17 in strength, you know why, we're going to bump this up with a half feet later. Dexterity at 14, a pretty decent level that's going to get bumped up by our equipment as well. Constitution at 16, perfect for us, especially when we are going to be taking barbarian levels. Intelligence at 8, we don't need it. Wisdom at 10, so that our wisdom saving throws aren't completely abysmal, but again, I would like this higher, but I want that 17 more. And Charisma is at 8. Karlik is a very charismatic person, but... We just can't really afford the stats. As for our skill proficiencies, Carlite comes with the soldier background, which is what I would have chosen, as it gives us athletics and intimidation, which are both, or um, athletics and survival. No, she's an outlander. My apologies, she's an outlander. Either way, we want athletics, and I'm going to be picking up intimidation as one of our two skills, and I've gone with insight for the second. But athletics, athletics and survival are perfectly fine, but I definitely want intimidation. Next up, a fight to level two, we're getting action surge, which you already know about. At Fighter Level 3, we get to choose our subclass, and of course, as stated, we're going with Rune Knight. Rune Knight is going to give us a few things, uh, namely we're going to be getting Rune Carver, which allows us to gain proficiency in sleight of hand, and we can use magic runes to enhance our abilities, as well as Inscribe Rune, allowing us to, well, Inscribe Runes. These runes will give us passive magical abilities and unlock unique actions, sometimes. Uh, these aren't really the main focus of the build, just kind of nice extra bonuses. Now, if you're coming from 5th edition, you'll know that in the tabletop game, you actually inscribe these runes onto your equipment, and that's how you gain these powers. But because Baldur's Gate 3 works a little bit differently, uh, it, these are basically going to act as kind of permanent spells, or at least ones that last until your next long rest, that you cast on yourself. This will allow you to change what runes you have on any given day much like the tabletop and it's going to feel a lot more appropriate actually in game because you know there's a whole logistical thing of inscribing runes on armor and then the armor gets swapped around in your inventory and then it, it becomes a whole thing so these are kind of just part passive buffs, buffs you're going to cast on yourself kind of like uh paladin's auras or a uh, bind packed weapon for warlock but the main reason we're here is giant's might allowing us to grow in size and become stronger Basically, if we are smaller than large, which Karlak somehow is in the eyes of the game, we become large, and we gain advantage on ability checks and saving throws using strength. Uh, pretty similar to like Baldurin's Giant Slayer's a giant form or the enlarge spell. But once on each of your turns, one of your attacks with a weapon or unarmed strike deals an additional 1d6 damage. 
pretty good. Uh, this is actually a toggleable passive. The mod kind of made it so that like you toggle the passive on when you want the additional damage, so you can pick and choose when you actually do it, like the actual tabletop game, instead of it just being used on your first attack. But of course, this allows us to grow in size, which is quite nice. Uh, as for our spells, which are actually our runes, we can choose a couple. We have Inscribed Cloud Rune, which would give us advantage on sleight of hand and deception checks. Inscribed Fire Rune, which would give us expertise on sleight of hand checks. And this rune can be invoked to, res to restrain and deal additional fire damage to a creature you hit with an attack using a weapon. Definitely picking that one up. Each of these have extra abilities as well. This rune can be invoked to transfer an attack to another target. Uh, this one can give us advantage on animal handling and intimidation, and can be invoked to increase our sturdiness, whatever that means. And finally, the stone rune, which will allow us to force a creature into a dreamy stupor. So I like to pick up the stone rune and the fire rune. I mean, the fire rune just makes sense for Karlek, and the stone rune has quite a lot of utility that I quite like. At Fighter Level 4, we're going to be getting our first feat, and you already know what we're doing. We're picking up Tavern Brawler. This is going to allow us to add our Strength modifier twice to the attack and damage rolls of thrown, unarmed, and improvised weapons. Now, the, I was originally going to use, before the thrown weapon fighting style came up, uh, the unarmed fighting style that comes with the mod. Unfortunately, the unarmed fighting style, the way it uh, works in this game... Uh, with this mod is that it actually basically turns your fists into a weapon so unfortunately it does not get unarmed damage bonus boosts and it works separately from the unarmed attacks you'd get from monk and such like that so it didn't really work for this build you can still choose it if you want it's just not going to be the more powerful option which is thrown weapon fighting Next up at fight to level 5, we're going to be getting extra attack i mean this is going to allow us to throw or attack twice per turn which is great And at level 6 of Fighter, we do get an extra bonus feat, which is going to allow us to bump up our strength to a total of 20, giving us big, beefy attacks. Now, we're going to be moving on to our multi-class, which you already know is Barbarian. It wouldn't be a Karlak build without Barbarian in some shape or form. This will give us Rage. You already know what that does. It's going to give us an extra two damage with melee and improvised weapons as well as throwing damage. So it's perfect for this build. It's also going to give us advantage on strength checks and saves. So we're going to just get super advantage on our, uh, you know, our strength saves. And, you know, obviously the damage resistance is nice as well. Next up at Barbarian level 2, we'll be getting Reckless Attack, which is always nice to have. And then at five, and then at Barbarian level 3, we get to choose our subclass, and I'm going with Path of the Giant. Path of the Giant is going to give us a new version of Rage called Giant Rage, which increases our size by another stage, our movement speed increases by 3 meters, increases our weapon reach, and increases all throw damage by our strength modifier. Pretty powerful. This is going to make our thrown weapon attacks even stronger. We also do gain a single cantrip, that being Druid Craft, allowing us to gain advantage on intimidation checks, or instantly snuff out a light or source of fire on an object. Garlic, as is Ariel Tiefling, already gets Thaumaturgy, so this isn't the most impressive thing in the world, but having that little bit of like being able to like kind of magically control fire kind of felt right for Karlak. And intimidation checks, I mean, this build is going to be pretty intimidating. At Barbarian level 4, we are going to be getting another feat, and it's entirely up to you what you want to take here. Savage Attacker could be a good uh, kind of feat for this build, uh, but I don't think it works with thrown attacks, so it's up to you if you kind of want to focus more on the throwing or the melee. I'm just going to be taking an ability score improvement and bump up our constitution, as we are going to be a kind of tanky fighter, so I want to get that extra HP. It's especially needed in Act 3. At Barbarian level 5, we'll be getting extra attack, which we don't need as we already have it, but we do get a bit of an increase to our movement speed, which is nice when we need to get distance for maximum throwing damage. And finally, at G Giant Barbarian level 6, we get Elemental Cleaver, allowing us to, when we rage, infuse a main hand weapon with an elemental power. It gains an extra 1d6 of that element in damage, and then it returns to the owner when thrown. So this allows us to make it so any weapon we use returns to us when thrown, which is really nice. I've already got two throwing weapon options that, all, that have the returning weapon property, so we don't need that aspect of this. This is just going to make our thrown weapons deal even more damage, and 
We can imbue our attacks with fire, which felt on theme for Karlak. And that is the build. Overall, what you're going to be getting out of this is a lot of tankiness, a lot of damage, and a very big Karlak. As I, as you, as I said here, we can invoke these uh, runes and do an interesting animation to get a bunch of damage, to get a bunch of extra buffs and such like that. And as such, we will be very, very powerful. But uh, again, using Giant's Might, we can become a very big... But let's get into the actual equipment. This build is very simple, so there's not actually too much to talk about here. I mean, look, we haven't even filled up two flipping columns on the uh, on the old ability chart here. Ignore all this other stuff, by the way. These are emotes that I use for taking thumbnails. So let's get into the build. As for our equipment, it's all fairly standard throwing. Let's get the obvious stuff out of the way, which is the throwing weapon kit. The gloves of uninhibited Kashigo add an additional 1d4 damage on throw attacks or improvised weapons, and the ring of flinging adds an extra 1d4 of bonus damage to throws as well. Stacking that with our giant's might and our rage and all that sort of thing, that's a lot of damage in a single throw. Uh, as for the rest of our equipment, I have the Mask of Soul Perception, which is just going to give us a plus two bonus to attack, initiative, and perception checks. The initiative is what I'm really looking for here, allowing us to, with our 16 in dexterity, get ahead of the pack quite easily, and being able to go first in battle, allowing us to rage early on, and then start throwing. Uh, I recommend, if you know you're going to get into combat, to cast Giant's Might beforehand, and then rage when you enter combat, as they both cost a bonus action. So you're going to need to preempt to the start of combat a little bit, but once you're in, you're in. Uh, then, as I, as I kind of already alluded to, we have the Graceful Cloth, which is going to give us Cat's Grace, so advantage on dex checks, which is nice, and a dexterity, our dex increases by 2 to a maximum of 20, allowing us to start with that lower dexterity, but not feel the, pa the pain too much. As well as we, we also get a plus one bonus to our deck saving throws and also increase our jump distance by 1.5 meters. I really liked the idea of being this giant that can like jump around the battlefield in massive leaps and bounds and crush people under their weight. So I've also included the bone spike boots, which will give us a plus one bonus to armor class and saving throws as long as you are not wearing armor or holding a shield. Now we are wearing armor, but I have included this shield as an option for this build, which is the adamantine shield picked up in Act 1, allowing you to, whenever a melee attack misses you, you can send the attacker reeling, which just gives them a debuff to their attack rolls, as well as attackers cannot land critical hits against you, so it's just a bit of extra tankiness, but if you want to drop that, you'd only be losing one AC, and you would gain those additional benefits from the bone spike boots. Also, our jump distance is increased by 1.5 meters and we gain a new unique jump called Brutal Leap, which allows you to leap at a target and possibly knock it prone. So a way to knock our enemies down for even more damage. And again, gives us a ton of more maneuverability to be able to get around the battlefield and get to high up places for the optimal throwing damage, because of course throwing damage does more if there's like more distance going down. Like the more gravity, the more damage. As for our accessories, I've picked up the Moon Drop Pendant. Whenever the wearer has 50% hit points or less, they don't provoke opportunity attacks. So if things are getting pretty hairy and you need to get to throwing distance without taking any damage, this will help you. Uh, basically just kind of a get out of jail free card for when things start to get hairy. The ring of flinging, as I've already said, and finally the ring of jumping. Again, I couldn't find a ring that really made sense for this slot any... There wasn't really many rings that kind of synergized well with this playstyle, so I just picked the ring that's going to kind of give us even more of the kind of theming here, which is go which is this, and it's going to allow us to cast Jump, which allows us to triple our jumping distance as a bonus action for 10 turns once per short rest. So now, even with our giant form, we can jump leaps and bounds. Pretty fun, just a bit of theming. But our main thing here is the weapon. And this is where things get busted. This is the Nalruna, a level three, uh, not level three, a legendary weapon, which is plus three. Uh, it deals 1d8 uh, th uh, piercing damage when wielded in uh, two hands, or 1d6 for us uh, in a one hand if you're using a shield, but it also does an extra 1d6 of thunder. But here's the thing, this weapon will return to your hand when thrown, so again, we already have that property. Uh, and I kind of decided to pick weapons that already have the homing weapon property, so they return to you when thrown, because if you do the build with the leveling scheme that I've shown, you won't actually get the ability to apply that to all weapons until uh, level 12 or level 6 if you go with that, the barbarian levels first. So I decided to uh, kind of use these weapons, but really once you get uh, that level 6 barbarian feature, you could do it with any weapon. When 
when this weapon is thrown, the weapon creates an explosion that deals an additional 3 to 12 thunder damage in a 6 meter blast centered around the target, so anyone in that 6 meters is going to take extra thunder damage. Uh, combining this extra thunder damage with every buff to our throwing attacks that we've placed on this build, with the, you know, with the giant's might, the rings, the equipment, everything, this build does a lot of damage. It will one and two shot most things. One shotting kind of like basic enemies like the Flaming Fist like you saw in the combat footage. And it can pretty much two to three shot steel watchers. And I mean bosses, you go ham on a single boss with like action surge and just a bunch of throws. They're going to get destroyed. Like I even in, in both of the combat footage videos that I'll show if I was able to recover the original one where I was just kind of initially testing the build. Uh, you'll see that I forgot to enable the cloud root, uh, the like fire rune, which gives more damage as well. So like this technically isn't even the full power of the build, and it just shredded everything in its path. This build is, again, in terms of raw damage output, probably the most powerful thing I've ever done. And yes, it's a modded build, and yes, it only really gets this much mega damage when you get to the late stages of the game, but still, it's very strong. Uh, and more on that later. Uh, for, as back to the weapon here, uh, we also gain a 3 meter bonus to movement speed and jump distance, so again, being able to move and jump even further, which is great, and this weapon gives you immunity to falling damage, so all that jumping around we're going to do isn't going to affect us damage-wise. We're also going to get two unique attacks if the tooltip can stay up, Zephyr Strike allowing us to basically rush forward and inflict bleeding and do a bunch of thunder damage, as well as Zephyr Break allowing us to knock enemies off balance and do a bunch of thunder damage, so you're going to have a lot to do with this build, it's pretty cool. But of course, with the, the headpiece and the weapon are both Act 3 options. The boots are as well, but you can just slap the evasive shoes on there if you still want the plus uh, the plus 1 tier AC. In which case, with the shield, you'd actually have a total of 20. But I do have some earlier game options for you for a weapon and a headpiece. As for the weapon, in Act 1, you can get the Returning Pike, a plus 1 weapon that will return to you when thrown, pretty much enabling the throwing playstyle right away. And the fact that this, this... Uh, and this are all obtained in Act 1 alongside this, uh, you basically have the full playstyle of this build right from the get-go. Pretty strong. This build will be strong throughout the entire game. And for the headpiece, we have the Marksmanship Hat, which will give you a plus one bonus to your throw and attack rolls, until you get the plus two bonus from the Mask Assault Perception along with all the other goodies. And as for the modded camp clothing that I have here, these are the Fur Collar Breastplate and the Adventurous Boots from the extra gear as camp clothing mod and for the die from the boring pack mod we have the Inamarota die which just gives us this kind of meta me metallic red and brown kind of look which I felt looked quite good on Karlak. Ah uh, so yeah that's the build. Uh, pretty simple nothing too crazy here basically just making yourself as big as possible and then just dealing a ton of damage by throwing shit. You're, you're basically a giant trebuchet of just damage and uh oh by the way ignore in the combat footage the fact that when we grow big uh, our armor disappears pay no attention to that especially you youtube i actually might have no idea if i have to censor that or not i genuinely don't know i will maybe just to be safe um so if you see some black bars or some blurs on the screen uh you know why but yeah this build i mean you'll see from the combat footage it both combat footage, they end instantly. Like, it's just done. It's over. In no time flat. The, the enemies just melt. Uh, and this brings up a question. Is this build actually fun to play? Don't get me wrong. Uh, as a fun gimmick and a joke and just something you can kind of do for fun when you're just messing around with the game, yes, it's very fun. But to play through the whole game like this, even on, like, maybe something like Tactician or even Honor Mode, just absolutely shredding everything and remember i do all my testing on tactician which of without with the aside from some legendary actions in honor mode the hp and stuff and that should be around the same like this build melts everything and with the power progression of this build uh, you get the play style very very early on and you if especially and if you started with barbarian levels for example uh you could get like tavern brawler really early on and then get the uh, the elemental extra damage like you would be shredding things probably in one or two hits as early as like mid act two and you have to actually ask yourself, is that fun? When you just press a couple of buttons, shred your way through the game, and, like, just win. 
I mean, for some people, yes. For challenge runners and, like, speed runners or, like, uh, just people who are just messing around and don't really care about anything, like, yeah, that's perfectly re that's perfectly fine. But I don't know if I would actually play this build. I played a throwing barbarian build uh, in my multiplayer playthrough with my buddy uh, Private Noodles or Dawson. You've seen him on the channel a few times. And it was one of the most legitimately fun builds I played. I played a level 8 Berserker Barbarian mixed with level 4 Thief Rogue, getting those bonus action throws with that extra damage and all that. I was throwing goblins around in Act 1. I was throwing, uh, like, every... Like, I would just pack my inventory full of random crap and just throw it at enemies. And it was a really fun time. We had a really fun time with that. And that, in my opinion, is a fun way to do a throwing build. This, it's funny, it's strong, it's powerful, very powerful, but I can't say I'd actually play this build. And this is more me just kind of being like, I mean, I just, I mean, I found this combination and I thought, yeah, I'm going to show it because it's funny. Um, but again, I don't know if it's something I'd actually play. If you want to, more power to you. I mean, it is absolutely a fun build. I would just, since you're going as far as modding the game to give you more, uh, you know, subclasses and that maybe throw in a difficulty mod as well just to kind of keep things balanced. I mean, I'm, I could be totally wrong. This build might just get absolutely swept in the early game and all that, and maybe if the enemies actually get a chance to attack you, you don't last very long. But, I don't know. I just, I think this is the problem overall when people build for power. Uh, you know, I mean, you see a lot of other content creators who are just like most OP broken build and they come up with these absolutely ridiculous ways stacking things on top of each other to give you 500 damage in a turn. And at that point... Are you even playing the game anymore? And while this isn't necessarily to that extreme, it certainly feels like the closest I've ever gotten to it. And I don't know. It's a bit weird. I think this build is funny. I think this build is cool. I think this build, you know, plays on that kind of giant car-like meme that circulated for a bit. But overall, I'd actually probably stay away from this one. This is the first build I've ever made where I say, you know what? Maybe don't make this one, <laughs> uh, which is an interesting thing. I kind of just wanted to, I wanted to do it, like I said, but I also kind of just wanted to bring up the conversation of like, this is the type of build that I usually try to avoid making these big, broken, overpowered builds, which in my opinion, this kind of is. So I think I'll sign it off here. Uh, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.